Attention tabletop gamers, if you want to try to prove that you are the legendary gamer, then you should go ahead and enter Upper Deck's Legendary Gamer Contest. You can win prizes like cool Upper Deck Legendary swag or even a trip to next year's Gen Con. We're also running our very own smaller version of that contest right here on our channel. Go check out our Legendary Gamer unboxing video for more details on both those contests. For hours, you have just about a week until October 6th to enter if you want to win some cool prizes. Welcome to this Rovercrit News Roundup for the month of September 2021. A lot happened this month, including Gen Con. Unfortunately, we won't be talking too much about that. Luckily, we have plenty of Gen Con videos for that because there's a lot of news stories to go over, including many companies seeing maybe the consequences of their actions coming back to haunt them. We're going to start off by talking about some of the issues that have been facing the board game industry at large over the past several months, namely the ongoing shipping crisis. Prices for shipping and manufacturing from overseas continue to increase, and we have seen many delays, whether it be Kickstarter games or general release retail games, from a lot of different publishers. And one of the biggest, most known publishers out there is Asmodee, who has many smaller companies under their umbrella. They recently announced a number of price increases across the board for many of their products, especially their Fantasy Flight game lines. Some of these games have seen increases between $5 and $10, and it looks like that is a reaction to the increased shipping and manufacturing costs in order to offset their losses and continue to be able to sell these here in the United States and other countries elsewhere in the world. These price increases are going to affect many base games as well as smaller expansions and ongoing releases. Uh, for instance, the Fantasy Flight LCGs, those packs are increasing by a few dollars each month depending on what game system you're looking at. So uh, odds are this is going to affect you and there's a good chance we're going to see this kind of thing happen with other publishers now following Asmodee's announcement. There is a lot of talk talking about how this is maybe something that's been that was going to happen eventually in the board game world, that we have had it pretty much a little bit too good uh, price-wise for some of these things. But the shipping thing is a huge factor. Just to give an idea of what's going on, a lot of this is if, like, if someone rubbernecks in traffic, it takes a while for it to clear up. And right now, though, with the boats, that rubbernecking, instead of being a few-hour delay, is it's been a whole year. There are currently in, last I checked, I heard in around LA, 60-ish boats waiting to dock. And in Shanghai, around China, there's like 140. Just to even get one of those crates that they put on the ships is very difficult. And you can see plenty of people talking about how this price has increased exponentially in a way that none of them foresaw, especially for Kickstarters, that's really bad. And of course, yes, they can airship it, but that is extremely expensive. We only hear people doing that usually to make sure they get it for a convention or something. Yeah, I feel like every month we hear more and more horror stories from publishers, especially smaller publishers who just can't afford to bring these things overseas. So they're either paying extra out of pocket or just putting everything on hold indefinitely. It's a really tough situation right now for everybody. Uh, unfortunately, if you're a board game consumer, I think you're just going to have to learn to be patient uh, even more so than you already had been with a lot of these projects. And hopefully, Hopefully these things will be resolved in the near future. On a side note, if you plan to do any Christmas or holiday shopping, do it now. A lot of people are saying these things are going to be empty, shelves are going to be empty and be hard to get by the time you do your usual shopping in November. Sticking with Asmo Day, we often joke about in our news segments whenever we learn that they are acquiring another company in order to become bigger, or the last time when they sold for a very, very large amount. Well, the company that bought them, PAI Partners, or possibly Pi, not sure how to pronounce it, uh, is deciding that they now want to sell Asmo Day. Currently, the price tag on Asmodee, if you're interested for purchasing, is 2 billion euros. He's being handled by Goldman Sachs, and we learned from this actually from the tweet from a guest on our previous podcasts, uh, Stephen Bonacore, our first two-time non rover Grid employee guest. As of this recording, we do not know if it actually has someone it's being sold to yet. It seems very likely. Yeah, it's it's being shopped around for sure. And obviously, this is a big deal because, like we said, Asmodee owns Fantasy Flight, Z-Man Games, uh, the Catan line, so many other board games that 
uh, whoever they sell it to has a lot of power in our industry, right? It's right. <laughs> and the other idea is that usually, you know, you go around and this is not as much anymore, luckily, but you talk to people and be like, talk about board games, they think Hasbro. If Asmodee keeps being sold at these bigger prices, that usually means it becomes more recognized. Are we going to start seeing people understanding what Asmodee is, do you think, as a board game publisher next to Hasbro, or at least to those maybe who aren't in the hobby? It could be. I mean, they certainly have enough gigantic licenses and titles. That logo could start to become synonymous with board games. And, and many for many people, it already has, I think. And they just they don't seem to show any sign of stopping. They continue to grow. And I imagine whoever buys them next is going to continue to continue to grow the company. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I don't know that this train will ever stop. <laughs> While some companies are finding ways to continue to grow and thrive during our current shipping crisis, others are not so lucky. It was reported by Board Game Geek through an earnings report, a financial earnings report from IDW, that their IDW games section would be shutting down. As of now, there hasn't been really an official statement made on this subject, but it seemed pretty clear from reading this report that the IDW games public publishing section was going to no longer be producing games at some point in the near future. Uh, IDW Games, of course, had a lot of big licenses under their belt that they published games based on, including Nickelodeon, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Ghostbusters. Uh, there's a good chance you've seen or played a few of their games at some point. They probably made their way to their table or you've seen them at a convention, perhaps. Uh, so this is, you know, this is the, the downside of everything going on right now. Uh, hard to say how much of this is specific specific to IDW games versus uh, more of something that's affecting our entire industry right now. Uh, but it's certainly not the only closing we've seen uh, in recent memory. And it seems like there might be more to come. Yes, we talked a while back about Tasty Minstrel having to mo oh, pretty much close. I think they're technically like if they somehow get back into the black, they may start returning again. But mm. I would say that's very unlikely. And yes, obviously, everything I think sort of connects. It's getting, if it's so hard to get your games out, it's hard to make the money and then also get people excited about, it, which caused talk, you know, for a lot of, especially smaller publishers, Gen Con, which just happened, is sort of like the time when you can explode and talk about your thing. If you can't, you're getting, get your games to Gen Con or Origins or Essen in uh, significant quantities, that's going to be a big issue. And if you miss the holiday rush, which might be even earlier than before, then also no one's talking about during the holidays. So this is a very, probably a very scary time for a lot of publishers. Yeah, and obviously, certainly for IDW Games, uh, we've heard about some of their projects being canceled also in recent memory. So we'll have to stay tuned and be on the lookout to see if maybe some of those end up creeping out to other publishers with perhaps different themes or licenses attached. <laughs> Another sad news story, but this one with a bit more of a silver lining. In a previous podcast, we talked about how Keyforge is being put on hiatus because the algorithm that builds the decks broke. If you don't know about Keyforge, it is a card game that actually uses a computer algorithm to build unique decks, meaning if you buy a deck, you're the only one who owns that. You may share cards with other decks, but it's a unique list with a unique name, some of them being very funny. We do not know how or why, but the system that makes this these decks broke so that they build it up from scratch, which, as you can guess, is probably a bit of a pain. Now, they did show the image at the time for the new set, and in the in-flight report for Gen Con, they actually talked about the new set a bit more, talking about how not only is it finished, they talked about the new faction, its mechanics, as well as all the other factions in there, pretty much showing that, that they're not giving up on this. This is not something they're like, oh, we'll put it, maybe we'll return. So I know this is probably sad news if you are a fan, but luckily compared to maybe some of the other properties you've seen with Fantasy Flight where they say hiatus or something, it looks pretty likely to return. Yeah, it's, it sounds like, I think you wouldn't bother rebuilding that algorithm if you didn't have <laughs> at least some vested interest in making this work. They also talked about a new digital companion to Keyforge, some kind of digital format to be able to play the game online. So that'll be very interesting to see. Uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a weird thing and it's something that most games wouldn't have to deal with because very few games do this kind of a thing. Uh, but it is encouraging, I think, to hear that they are, they are putting 
putting their weight behind it and hopefully they can figure this all out soon. And if and when the algorithm is up and running, then they'll have to deal with their own shipping issues. So <laughs> there's a couple <laughs> of hurdles to get past here. If you want to learn more of what the new set has, as well as anything else Fancy Flight has in store, you can, of course, check our second Gen Con video all about the in-flight report. And as we reach the tail end of our news roundup, we unfortunately have to cover some upsetting and controversial happenings at a few different board game publishers. First up, there's Paizo, publisher of the Pathfinder role-playing game. They have had a number of firings over the past few weeks that has resulted in a big backlash from some former employees and current employees, as well as fans and supporters of the company, and has led to the reports of a less-than-ideal atmosphere sphere at that company, harassment, as well as just generally poor treatment of the employees there. Uh, the president, Jeff Alvarez, put out a statement saying that they are going forward, going to try to alleviate these issues and concerns by having an external organization come in and try to work with them and figure out the root of some of those problems. Then there's the Gaming Goat, also known as TGG Games. They ran into their own special controversy with their recent fishing deck building game that was on Kickstarter. Uh, we won't get quite into it because there's a lot to discuss here, but essentially there was some problematic imagery featured in their game. Uh, they backed down and refused to change that artwork once they were called out on it. And as a result, they have alienated large sections of the gaming industry. And in fact, the president was ousted from Gen Con and the company as a whole is no longer being allowed at this month's Origins Game Fair. And finally, following up on the Broken Token Company, producer of board game inserts, last month we talked about their president, Greg Spence, and his sexual harassment allegations. Uh, he has since then made a statement that he is stepping down as CEO and putting someone new in that position. However, it appears that he will still be connected to the company on some level and most likely profiting from any profits they would take in. So there's a lot of bad things happening, uh, and but it, we are now seeing these things come to light. It seems like a lot of them have been going on for longer than we have realized. And I don't think this, it's certainly, again, not the beginning and not the end of this kind of thing coming into the news and just being reported on more and more. But it is a little disheartening to see so much of this turmoil occurring throughout different, various different areas of the industry. Now, for each of them, uh, it's we've noticed a backlash into not sort of supporting the companies anymore, though we haven't seen too much with Paizo yet because that one is very recent. Now, as for the other two, for example, the Broken Token, a lot of people are not using their products anymore, including the Frost Haven, which was actually part of the pledge. I think recently they just announced they finally found a new insert company to replace Broken Token, so you'll still be able to have a way to sort out your Frost Haven box. And as we, you said with the uh, gaming goat, uh, they weren't part of them weren't allowed at Gen Con, but there was a booth for the company. But Origins is going to be completely closed off, and I assume that's probably going to continue for other conventions as well, unless there is a major change in the leadership. And obviously, as we said with Broken Token. It's got to be major in a way that we notice it doesn't just look like smoke and mirrors. People realize that people are still getting benefits or just doing something for lip service. Now, for Paizo, though, and this is what I think is interesting, those two are – well, once Broken Token was bigger, but it's an insert, not a game. Uh, the other one's a small game company. Pathfinder is pretty big. Do you think there will be as big of a do not support Paizo until we see change, or do you mm. think it's too big that people aren't going to – avoid their products. It's hard to say. And also, you know, who they partner with, they mostly do their own stuff. And I also think that relatively speaking, uh, I mean, it's hard to say. I don't want to like rank the severity of, <laughs> of, of these terrible things that have been going on. But uh, I, I think that they can recover from this. Whereas I feel like in the case of, for instance, the broken token, there the guy needs to just leave or that's like, that's it. I don't think there's a way for him to come back. I think they could possibly take steps and restructure the organization and and come back from this. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think the, the end, the ultimate thing here to take away is just be aware of what's going on with these companies, Ch choose what's right for you, who you want to support. And hopefully going forward, more of these companies will be culpable for these things and we can move on into a world where they happen less and less. 
now we're gonna go on to maybe something a little bit more exciting, and that's games you can now buy. Starting off from weird games, we've got Bayou Bash. In this game, you are all gremlins in a race, each of you with unique mounts and powers. You want to show off you're the coolest writer and have the most fans. So obviously, the best way to do that is going to be playing dirty. The D&D Adventure System series is getting a new standalone expansion titled Ghosts of Saltmarsh. There's going to be problems dealing with the village and old villains as well as some new ones may resurface. This include, of course include new miniatures, stories for your heroes to progress in that system. Then we've got Fort Cats and Dogs. This is from Leader Games, an expansion for Fort, a deck building game where you're trying to attract other kids in the neighborhood to build the coolest forts. This, is, if you haven't guessed on the title, adds dogs and cats. The dogs will be very loyal to you as long as you have the environment for them when you play them. Cats, on the other hand, pretty finicky. Furnace is being released from Arcane Wonders. This is an auction and engine building game when you play as industrialists trying to make the most efficient systems and really increase your wealth. If you want to learn more about the game, we actually did a review a while back. You can check out that video. That was when it was with Hobby World, but the game is still more or less the same. Then Glenmore 2 Chronicles was released a while back, but this game was all about being Scottish leaders and you go through different chronicles, pretty much rule sets, and try to uh, get the most points. Now there's a new expansion, Glenmore 2 Highland Games, adds some no more chronicles, some more rule sets along, so more fun for your game. Good Puppers is a game when you are collecting dogs in order to have them bury bones in order to show you have the best puppers. If you're looking for a game with dogs and beautiful watercolor art, definitely check this one out. Gravwell 2nd Edition is released. This is a game when you are all in ships stuck in a bit of a gravity well, and you can't simply just jet out of there. You have to use your either your repulsor or tractor cannons to push and pull either other objects, or other players in order to try to get out of there first. Legendary has a new expansion, Legendary Annihilation. This one actually brings back the Fantastic Four and the Heralds of Galactus in order to fight off that which is Annihilation. Then Magic the Gathering released a new set. This one's a bit interesting. It is Innistrad Midnight Hunt. This is sort of a actual part one with part two being Crimson Val to be released later. This one focused a bit more on werewolves and does return to Innistrad, uh, many people's favorite gothic horror setting. Marvel Champions has a new character pack in the form of Nebula. This character now has special abilities on various upgrade cards that get activated every time she flips to her hero form. Mind Management is now available, the psychic espionage game. This is a one versus many game about an evil corporation that is trying to recruit new hires to take over the world and some rogue agents from within that company who need to track them down. They're going to have hidden movement in order to stop them and win the game. Mini Rogue is based on a print and play. This is a small card game. It's a fantasy dungeon crawler. You'll be progressing through various rooms, fighting off different creatures. This is for either one or two players. And every time you play, you're gonna experience a slightly different dungeon. Then there's Nourishima Hex 3.0, the Year of Moloch edition. This is a big box, new edition of the game that includes the core plus some expansion material uh, with some new artwork components and features. So maybe something to look at if you're a big collector of Nourishima Hex or perhaps if it's your first foray into that universe. Rift Force is available now. This one is a two-player head-to-head card game. You have different guilds and elementals within that guild. It's an area control battle game, so you're putting out different elementals and using your magical powers and your Rift Force in order to take over more areas of the play area than your opponent. Saloon Tycoon from Van Ryder Games is all about building up your own saloon in the Wild West. You're trying to attract cooler customers that are going to spend more money and get the most reputation points. They now have a second edition of that game. So if you didn't get it the first time around, this one is more or less the same with some slightly streamlined rules and maybe some upgraded components in there as well. A Vampire the Masquerade Rivals is an expandable card game that just came out a little while back. Uh, now they have an expansion, Blood and Alchemy. This one includes two new clans that you can play as. One of them specializes in using the blood 
tokens for various things, while the other one needs to mix their blood with different types of alchemy in their deck in order to make it stronger. Then there's Viral, the Hive. This is an expansion for the original game Viral, where you all play as different viruses infecting a human body. This one is a smaller box expansion that adds a specific player power, so everyone is going to have their own unique asymmetric setup when the game begins. And lastly, there's Zombicide Chronicles, the role-playing game from CMON. This is based on the long-running Zombicide board game series. You will be fighting off hordes of zombies, and if you like, you can even use the minis from those games to incorporate into your campaign. Uh, as always with board games, release dates are finicky and even more so, in the, as we said, in the time we're in right now. Uh, but there's some cool stuff to, to look at there. Uh, and there's more things to come. Uh, so that's, you know, even though I feel like a lot of this news roundup is dour, a lot of doom and gloom. Uh, if you're just watching this and you're having fun, the, the good news is that for the most part, uh, you don't have to think about it all the time the way we do. You can just have a game and enjoy it in your free time. <laughs> uh, can I actually point out one thing that at least you can knock on wood is good news. <laughs> Any wood around here? <laughs> uh, the chairs were on. Oh, okay, great. <laughs> um, we didn't have a story about the repercussions of Gen Con. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In terms of the, uh, you know, health and safety, all that stuff seemed to go pretty well. Yeah. That's a good sign. Yeah. So the fact no news is good news. Again, Gen Con might have been one of the bigger stories of the last month, but we have like a dozen or more videos on our YouTube channel over the past week, plus more discussion on our podcast. So if you're hungry for Gen Con stuff, Go check that out. This was the other stuff that happened in the past few weeks. And we'd like to hear from you in the comments what you think of these various stories, uh, which ones are affecting you or you have thoughts on, uh, and which of these new releases are you excited about picking up? What are you playing right now? We'd love to hear that in those comments down below. Let us know. But until then, I'm Will. I'm Jonathan. And this has been Roll for Crit. You know what would be great? If you liked this video and subscribed to our channel to stay tuned for more updates, you could also even go over to our Patreon page and support us there. We'll give you some really cool rewards in exchange for that. Or maybe you want to support us by buying some merch. You can check out our merch store where we are selling t-shirts with cool designs and other things too. Check it out.